question two. This question is about Charles law, uh, which is the relations between the volume and the temperature. When temperature increase, then the volume increase. Of course, the others must be constant, like pressure uh, and the moles of gas. In this question, the gas used is oxygen, and this oxygen gas can prepare from this H2O2 uh, with the manganese oxide, manganese 4 oxide. And this is equation H2O2 decomposed to form water and oxygen gas. So we can get the oxygen gas okay, from this uh, decomposition. Okay, in this part, uh, there is a safety hazard. Whenever they give safety hazard, then you have to uh, be careful because uh, they might ask uh, how to uh, give the precaution on this. Right? So H2O2 is corrosive uh, to skin. Uh, this is a setup that used to uh, investigate uh, Charles law. Uh, so we have a gas range to measure the volume that change. And of course, the thermometer used to measure the the temperature that uh, used so means uh, we can get the T and the V and uh, of course the oxygen uh, was collected and put in this uh, conical flask and of course uh, the temperatures can be controlled using this uh, the heating so this is a setup and uh, we will discuss this again later now, once the apparatus is assembled, the volume of oxygen gas uh, in the gas range is 2 cm cube. There are 80 cm cube oxygen remaining in the flask. So in this flask, 80 cm cube. In the gas range, initially is 2 cm cube. Total volume of oxygen is 82 cm cube. Now, the Charles law is investigated by the following method. Okay, so once it is uh, this setup assembled, allow the apparatus to reach uh, room temperature. Record the, this temperature and the total volume of oxygen. Means uh, before we we heat it, uh, so record the temperature and the volume. Okay, after that, uh, we need to change the temperature. Okay, let's say now uh, heat the uh, apparatus until thirty degrees C, and records the volume of oxygen. In the gas range. After that, repeat this uh, heating means uh, repeat this heating at interval at, of five degrees C until seventy degrees C. Okay. After that, uh, we get this table. So this table is from the different temperature from the initial until seventy. Okay. And this one is the temperature in Kelvin. So just uh, plus two seven three. Uh, after that, uh, this is the total volume of oxygen gas that uh, measured. So from 82 until 98. Okay, use this one to plot the graphs later. Okay, before that, uh, let's uh, discuss the part A. Other than wearing the safety goggles, give a safety precaution that the student must take during the preparation of oxygen. Uh, already told you just now H2O2 is corrosive when it's corrosive then we need to make sure uh, we wear the gloves uh, nowadays uh, if you put gloves on it uh, it's not really that uh, that specific so now you must add chemically resistant because it say that corrosive you cannot just wear a uh, normal gloves so the gloves must able to resist the corrosion so you must say that wear chemical resistant gloves. Okay, part B1. Complete the following diagram to show how the student can obtain oxygen by the gas collection over water for the use in the experiment in figure 2.1 just now. So must use the water means we must let the gas pass through the water. Uh, that's a requirement. Uh, this is the uh, answers from the mark scheme. Uh, so make sure uh, the no leakage and the delivery tube here do not emerge 
into the solution. Make sure it's above the solution. Make sure it's airtight, no leakage. So put a stopper here. Okay, after that, uh, must show this uh, water bath. And uh, it's not really practical to put a burette or others uh, like a measuring cylinder burette. Because in this experiment just now, the, this figure uh, is the conical flask. So we just use the conical flask to get the oxygen then. So we put this uh, conical flask. Uh, it's actually better to fully fill that uh, uh, first. After that, uh, to uh, let this uh, the gas okay, from the reaction mixture, right? And uh, get into this uh, conical flask. So when the water level getting down, so we know that uh, these uh, the gas that collected is oxygen gas. Uh, or actually, this is for me. <laughs> I, I I personally think that this is actually uh, more even more practical. Uh, so this is not really in the drawing uh, uh, in the mark scheme. So this is uh, suggested by me. Uh, okay, we use the same um, this uh, uh, solution and the catalyst, and again uh, make sure it's uh, airtight, no leakage, and this one uh, the gas that produce will pass through a container with water only. So because it say over water, so means we use water medium. So make sure this tube is uh, uh, immersed in the water and let this gas push uh, through the water. After that, uh, the gas that produced here, so it will go into the conical flask that we're going to use later. So we just let the reaction uh, the, uh, start and let it react for a while and let this oxygen fill up, right? So after that, we can detach, detach these two and we can insert the gas range and the thermometer. Uh, so this is uh, the, uh, the the one that su uh, suggest by me. Okay, uh, but this uh, this one is from the Mark scheme. Uh. Okay, uh, if let's say uh, you you uh, to make sure the oxygen gas uh, is uh, for let's say the one that suggested by me. Uh, if let's say we want to make sure oxygen gas uh, uh, is uh, uh, is pure is uh, uh, what I call fully filled in this conical flask, uh, we just let the reaction uh, re uh, this reaction mixture let them react uh, mo uh, more time longer time, so uh, the gas that inside this conical flask confirm is pure oxygen gas. Okay, for part C one, plot a graph. Uh, show the relations uh, between the volume of oxygen and the absolute temperature. Uh, draw the line of best fit. Um, I show mine uh, using this uh, the data in the table just now. This one to plot the graph. Okay, this one no calculations needed. Just follow this and plot. Okay, so make sure you follow these uh, the values and plot correctly. Uh, you should get something like this. Uh, Make sure you draw the line of best fit. Make sure the line uh, uh, is uh, uh, passed through as many plots as possible and is balanced. Means uh, above and below the line uh, uh, is uh, balanced. So uh, my one is like this. Uh, so if you draw the correct best fit, then you can get near to the values in the mark scheme. Okay, so now later we'll uh, uh, we'll discuss this abnormalist. Okay, this the one that uh, at uh, three hundred uh, and eight Kelvin. Uh, this is the abnormalis point. We'll discuss this one later. Okay, part two uh, determines the gradient of uh, your line of best fit. State the coordinates of both points. You use in calculation, uh, and uh, uh, this must selected from the line of best fit. So means you must get the two coordinates really on the line. Uh, then the gradient that you calculate is more accurate. And 
your gradient should be to 3SF. Okay, for mine, I choose this. Uh, make sure you, uh, when you try to get the coordinate, uh, the triangle or the uh, is uh, more than uh, half of the scale. So it means uh, you you choose uh, the coordinates as, uh, as far as possible, right? So then it's better. Okay, so for, for mine, uh, I use these two coordinates. Okay, so in order to calculate gradient, it's very easy. Just use delta y over delta x. Uh, so for mine, I get uh, 0 0.364. So if you draw the uh, best fit, uh, you should be able to get uh, near to my value or near to the values uh, in the mark scheme, right? Okay, this one, uh, I think most of you can do it. Uh, now, part D1. On the graph, circle the point which you believe uh, to be the most abnormal uh, is the point that uh, at 308 Kelvin just now, right? Uh, suggest a possible explanation for this abnormally. Um, now, let's get back to this graph. Yeah, okay. So this one is the abnormalous point. Uh, it's actually uh, supposed to be somewhere here, means near to the line. At this temperature, 308 is supposed to be near to this but the now the volume of the oxygen gas uh, that uh, recorded is higher than uh, the uh, expected so what is the the main uh, reason for this so because this one is the recorded temperature 308 kelvin is telling us that this recorded temperature is something wrong means the temperatures now it should be higher higher than this so because the actual temperature in this experiment is higher than the recorded temperature because when temperature is higher the volume is higher so why this volume that obtained is higher? Because the actual volume is higher than the temperatures that recorded okay, in this experiment, means the, the ones that are in the table. Uh, so that's why the volume okay, is larger than the actual, larger than actual. So this is the volume that larger than actual. Actual should be, means at the 308, Kelvin, it should be here, right? So this is larger. Uh, that's that's a that's a explanation. Uh, why? Because okay, the actual temperature was higher than the recorded one. Means the actual temperature is higher than three zero eight. That's why the volume that recorded is larger than the actual volume. Part E one, identify the independence variable. This one is the one that we can change. So the one that we can change is the temperature. So we can use different temperature actually. Means when we use the different temperature, then uh, the others will change. Means the volume of the gas will change. Okay, part two. Suggest how the experiment could be made to be more reliable. Means uh, uh, the result is uh, so-called more accurate uh, please do not uh, give this one repeat experiment and take average um, because it's meaningless to take uh, an average in order to make it more reliable actually we should do this take more volume measurement means we try to use more temperature let's say 75 80 and others so we use more volume measurement from various temperature. Therefore, uh, the graphs here, we can get more plots. And after that, we can get a better best fit and we can remove more abnormalities. Uh, so that, that's why uh, we should take more volume measurement, not take average. Uh, so this is a better way to improve the results. Part F. The ideal gas equation show PV equal to nRT. Uh, so in this uh, question is actually the 
the y and x axis is this vol uh, the volume and temperature so therefore we know that uh, the gradient is actually n r over p so n r over p n is the most of the 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 gas so because now it's asked uh, what describe how the gradient of the graph that you have plot would be affected using a smaller volume of oxygen uh, if smaller volume of oxygen means uh, the most is getting lesser means it will be lesser so therefore this gradient the value will be smaller so gradient is smaller for the smaller volume of oxygen because n is lower right uh, so as the gradient is this huh? okay that's all thank you